to write a killer mystery. Today we're going to talk about scene dynamics. But first, I want to thank my patrons for supporting Write a Killer Mystery and for my writing projects as an author. So, first I want to talk about what happens in a scene. What happens in a scene? A scene is a revelation peeling back the curtains and revealing a character's mind. And that's a quote from Adam Skelter of The Art of Story. Now, Adam focuses mainly on screenplays, but in this case, it works for fiction as well. So every story is built with scenes. They are the building blocks for each chapter, each plot point, and each act of your story. You build it scene by scene by scene. And a scene is a story unit where an event takes place that changes a character's emotional state. The change is usually from positive to negative or negative to positive. So if the character enters happy, they leave the scene sad. Or if they enter angry, they leave surprised. And if they enter full of anxiety, they leave the scene relieved. So you build each scene with a three-step process. If you start your scene knowing these three components, you'll move from one to the other to construct a succinct mini story with a beginning, middle, and end. Each scene has three basic components. This is what happens in a scene. The point of view character wants something. Something blocks that point of view character. And there's a confrontation where the point of view character succeeds or fails. So you can look at it a different way. Each of these three components works with a question. At the beginning of the scene, the point of view character asks a question. And then there's conflict about that question. And by the end of the scene, the question is answered. It may not be the answer that that character wants, but there is an answer. And that's what triggers the emotional change. So whatever emotion your character brings to the beginning of the scene, the conflict will cause an emotional turn. And the turn is the axis around the which the scene evolves. It's the point of the scene. That turn. That's, that's turn is the point of the scene. And each scene in your story is like a piece of evidence to build your story to the final story climax. So you want to frame the scene with questions. Um, writer and director David Mamet suggests framing each scene with three questions. Who wants what? What happens if they don't get it? And why now? You notice we keep talking about three, so it's a really very straightforward construction. Whichever, whichever format works for you, just use those three points. You're going to have your beginning, your middle, and the end. It's like how the character is at the beginning. There's a, some kind of conflict in the middle. And at the end, there's a resolution. It may not be what that character wants, but it is a resolution. Now it says, of the three questions, who wants what, what happens if they don't get it, and why now, these answers to these questions is the litmus paper. Apply them and the answer will tell you if the scene is dramatic or not. So drama is what keeps 
the reader turning pages. So you want to start each scene with these questions in mind. Emotional change is that pivot. It's the turn. It's that turn is the essence. And your reader is going to follow your character through that scene and experience that emotional change. So the extent of the emotional change in a scene depends on its context and its location in the story. If a scene is located in Act 2, it might have a more subtle shift of emotion, perhaps a minor complication or a small success. But at the midpoint, the scene will have a more dramatic change. There's going to be a huge difference between how the character enters at the beginning of the scene and how they feel what their emotions are at the end of the scene. And quite often, after the midpoint, the character feels like the floor has just dropped from beneath them. Everything is not working. Everything falls apart. There's just no point to what's going on. So the amount of emotional impact depends on the pacing and theme you want to convey. Readers are drawn to contrast. That's why these changes, these pivots, these turns work in a scene. Whatever scene has the most contrast from one emotion to the next will have the most meaning to the character. So you want to save the most dramatic emotional contrast for the major story points. And even when a scene is not a big high emotional contrast, it still needs some kind of emotional turn. That is how scenes work with that emotional turn. So your work as a writer is to find the scenarios of conflict that evoke the emotional response in your reader and find the areas of conflict that cause your character to respond in a believable emotional way. Because you are the writer, you control the pacing. And when you vary the depth of emotional conflict in each scene, you control the pacing of the story. If every scene contains high emotional conflict, your story becomes a melodrama and the reader feels like this story is unbelievable. It doesn't resonate as being truthful. And this is true when a character overreacts emotionally to a small incident. So let me be clear. Your supporting characters may overreact, but make sure your protagonist, your sleuth, and your mystery responds with appropriate emotions to the conflict. For example, a suspect may overreact and act out to your sleuth's questioning, but your sleuth must not do the acting out. They want to know how the suspect is leading him to solve the crime or not. And that's why you want to raise the stakes, both physical and emotional, as the story progresses. It raise the stakes, there's more conflict as, as your story progresses. And then I want to give a brief note about what I call scene stoppers. Things that you feel are scenes that aren't really scenes. Remember, we want that emotional turn to happen. When a scene doesn't have all three elements, your reader is likely to lose interest in your story. So avoid empty scenes that don't move the story forward. Um, so one can be explanation. This all happened because blah, 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 and then blah, 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 blah. There's no emotional experience for your reader, and your reader will lose interest. And that's why backstories and long setting descriptions lose your reader. There's no emotional catch. There's no uh, emotional turn. The character isn't involved. So explanation is one scene stopper. Um, another is... Uh, conversation but not dialogue so 
what do you mean zero well characters chat about the weather or how the cat got out last night or anything anything but it has nothing to do with the story and it doesn't move the story forward and beginning writers can really get um tricked by this because they think they are um deepening the character and showing more about the character but a scene that's just conversation isn't dialogue about the story doesn't move the story forward is a scene stopper so cut those scenes out another one i call empty spectacle and this often ha happens with uh, mysteries that are set either with um, historical setting or a futuristic setting that include giant spectacles to illustrate you know what was going on at that time what is going on at that time the king's coronation or whatever it might be that that you have so with any story doesn't matter historical futuristic um the scene must be integral to moving the story forward so if your protagonist um doesn't have a reason to be there and it's not making sense to their solving the mystery then you want to get those big flamboyant scenes out as well so i know it's a lot to think about i think if you drew if you um, drill it down to those three questions you're going to have um what you need to write the beginning write the middle write the end and have your character experience a change through the conflict in the middle but you know you, there's a you can do a quick checklist when you finish a scene uh, to ensure that it deserves a place in your story you don't want those scene stoppers you want to get them out of there so you want to have the entering emotional state of your point of view character um, and you want your readers to know what their objective is within the scene what do they want why are they there what's going on then you want to have the conflict what impedes them from getting what they want and the motive for the antagonism because somebody over there is causing the conflict and giving them trouble so we need some understanding of the other character's motivation and we also it helps readers to understand your character if they have an understanding of their belief system the belief system they're operating in within 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 your story um tactics are what actions the character takes in the scene to achieve what they want at the beginning and i just want to remind everyone that dialogue is action so dialogue is totally appropriate as part of their tactic of what they want to get and this is often true for your sleuth because your sleuth is asking questions and getting responses from suspects um, then you want to make sure there's some kind of turn in that scene do they get what they want or do they not get what they want what actually comes out of the conflict in the middle of the scene and what is it that causes their emotions to change and was their objective achieved yes or no that's a simple one and and some sense of their exiting emotional state which is going to be different than their entering emotional state um, if you're writing a scene and you feel like something isn't working you can deconstruct the scene with this little checklist and see if all those elements are present and a scene is about creating a moment a moment your whole story is built from one moment to another moment to another moment to another moment and the reason i said your point of view character is because if you have scenes with from the point of view of someone who is not the protagonist you still want to have that change occur 
You want to have the feeling at the beginning, the conflict that makes the turn, and the ending emotion, emotional state that's different from the beginning of the scene. No matter how big or small, every scene is a revelation. So just think about that and think about that because, wow, scenes are what we do as writers. They are, they are those little building blocks that construct the whole story. And um, I really hope this, this helps because... I know with beginning writers, it's easy to get off track, and I think this is a good way to condense it down to those three points and make sure that each of your scenes has those three points. And as you're writing, if you think of those three points as you begin writing your scene, it's going to um, help you write your scene faster and contain all the elements. So, if you like this, I hope you will click that subscribe button and also the notification bell because then you will not miss another episode of Write a Killer Mystery. So that's it for today and I will see you next time. Keep writing.